please check out my revised website at creationsciencefiction.com. It's a great resource now for answering creationist claims. There's also documentaries, lectures, my blog, and more. Like my Facebook page, too. And if you want to support what I'm doing, you can become a contributor at patreon.com. Well, I looked far and wide, and I think I might have found a new creationist argument. But it's so bad, it might be one of the worst I've seen yet. Many of the biggest dinosaurs, such as some of the long-necked sauropods like Brachiosaurus, Titanosaurus, and Apatosaurus, would have eaten colossal amounts of vegetation. So why do we find such a conspicuous absence of plants in rocks containing dinosaur fossils? Take, for example, the Morrison Formation in Montana, USA. Even though this formation has yielded many dinosaur fossils, there is a startling scarcity of vegetation preserved. That's because plant matter quickly decays and is recycled and becomes the soil surrounding these dinosaur bones that we find. These same processes also break down the organic material of the animal, leaving the bones exposed where they're covered and later preserved. Paleontologists can reconstruct ecosystems like the Morrison Formation they mentioned in various ways. Pollen grains are well preserved in sediment layers because they're very resistant to decay. Grains are distinctive in shape and form and enable scientists to determine the types of plants that grew in different periods and different sedimentary layers. Once more, these pollen layers are specific to different environments. They're not mixed up and, and just, just strewn about like you'd expect if this had all happened during Noah's flood. Extensive research on the Morrison Formation shows that most of the time it was a warm, seasonal, semi-arid climate throughout, but it did change from dry semi-arid to humid semi-arid at times. This phenomenon of missing vegetation doesn't just apply to dinosaurs. The Coconino sandstone in the Grand Canyon has many animal trackways, but it is almost devoid of plants. These rocks tell us something profound about Earth history. They suggest that these deposits are not ecosystems buried over eons of time. Otherwise, we'd find more evidence of the plants that the animals ate. Instead, the evidence fits nicely with the biblical model of Earth history, whereby these animals were transported and buried catastrophically during Noah's flood. I just love it when they bring up the Coconino sandstone tracks and the environment then because it's one of my favorite areas of research. The diet of animals that were alive back when the Coconino sandstone was a desert would have been similar to the diet of animals we see in deserts today. That is, we would expect to see a lot of omnivores and insectivores that don't rely on plants for much of their diet. The reason we're not finding many plants in those layers is the same reason we don't find plants in many deserts today. The real problem here isn't for evolution or people that believe these layers took long periods of time under different environments to form. The problem is that of the creationist who believes these layers formed almost instantly. Why don't we see plants in all the layers if it all formed within a single year from Noah's flood? The closer you look at it using real science, the less sense the whole Noah's Flood story seems to make. Now there are some layers where there's excellent preservation of plants, but that was before dinosaurs existed, back in the Carboniferous. We call these older layers coal. And the reason we don't find dinosaur fossils in these older layers is they hadn't evolved yet. 